Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to be learning about PrestaShop performance settings. The version of PrestaShop we'll be using is version 1.4.0.17 which as of the date of this video is the current stable release and we're going to be covering five primary subject areas. The first one starting with Smarty and then we'll move on to the settings for Combine, Compress, and Cache and then Media Servers and we'll move on to ciphering and lastly we'll touch on caching. So before we go on to the next step though I want to be sure that uh, we give a great thanks to Nethercott Constructions. Most of the content of this video came from Nethercott Constructions with their permission and you can see that there's a link to the website uh, down at the bottom of this slide. It's www.nethercottconstructions.com. There will also be a link up in the text above this video. So let's go to the back office for a moment. In the back office we can access the performance settings by going to the preferences tab and then going into the performance sub tab. And here we have the five subject areas we spoke of in the previous slide. We've got the Smarty section, the Combine, Compress, and Cache, which sometimes I'll say is CCC. And then we've got the media server section, the ciphering section, and lastly the caching section. So let's go back to the top here, and I'm going to go on to the next slide. In this slide, I thought it would make it a little easier for the rest of the discussion if I broke down the users into two groups. The first group I'm going to call a store owner, who's typically not a programmer and really doesn't know much about file types. So in, in this specific case, uh, the store owner is not going to be modifying any of the Smarty template files, which is the extension .tpl. So a store owner is just simply going to be adding products to their PrestaShop store, and then they'll be uh, basically selling those products to the customers. They're not going to be doing any custom modifications to code or modules or templates. Now the second group of people are the programmer and developer types. Those are the folks who probably will be modifying .tpl files because they're either going to be modifying or creating custom modules or themes. And if you do that, you generally get invested in changing a .tpl file. Okay, so let's go to the back office and take a look at how these two user types will have different settings in the Smarty section and then in the Combine, Compress, and Cache section. Before we actually get into the Smarty section, I want to point out this little area right here where it says there is one warning. Click to see more. Now this affects the very last thing that we're going to talk about, which is the caching. So I'm just going to close this for now and get it out of our way. But I wanted to address it in case you were wondering why I didn't talk about it. Okay, so for the first section, Smarty, we have two choices, or two settings to make. We've got Force Compile and Cache. So I want to address the store owner settings first. As a store owner, you're not worried about compiling or recompiling TPL files because you're not making any modifications to them. And doing that actually takes some time. So we want to be sure that since we're not messing around with them, we set force compile to no. Now cache on the other hand, we want to take advantage of cache because it's something that gets stored on the web host's server and when a page is downloaded it can cache that page and as long as there are no change to, changes to it or if some things stay static then it can pull that cache out of the web host server's memory and the pages will load faster so we want to be sure that we enable cache so the fastest settings that you can choose in the smarty section are force compile to no and cache to yes. And then if you make changes, be sure that you click save. So now let's talk about the second group of users, which are the programmers and developers. If you're making changes or creating custom modules or templates, you're going to want to be sure that you have force compile set to yes or enabled. Because if you don't, the changes that you make to your TPL files are not going to show up in the front office you'll make the change and then you'll go to the front office to look for the change that you made but because it was not recompiled the change won't take effect 
And that also goes for cash, but just a different setting. So with cash, we don't want to be pulling cash. We want a non-cash environment. Otherwise, we'll just keep seeing the same page. That's sometimes why we go up to the toolbar here in Mozilla or Microsoft Internet Explorer, and we will actually go to clear recent history. And sometimes we need to get rid of cookies and cash in order to get a new screen to show up. Otherwise, it just keeps pulling from the cache and we see the same thing. So changes that we made don't appear. Okay, let's move on to combine, compress, and cache. So for the store owner, there's no reason to worry about debugging or taking a look at any of the files. So having compressed versions of CSS, JavaScript, and HTML are really a good thing because it makes the store run faster. So the settings that I have here with top radio button to use CCC for CSS and the same thing for JavaScript. And here we've selected minify HTML after the Smarty compile. Those will all make smaller files. If we go down to compress inline JavaScript in the HTML, we also want to compress that particular inline JavaScript. That will also make much smaller code. Now the last section down here we want to leave as keep W3C validation because if you choose this option your HTML is going to be compressed but it cancels the W3C validation and that's something that you do not want to do. So if you've made any changes in your store owner go ahead and click Save. But Now for those uh, those of us that might be changing the TPL files and fall into the programmer and developer group. It's going to be much easier to debug if we keep the CSS, the JavaScript, and the HTML as original. Because if you compress those files, they basically take all of the CSS files and make them into one, and all of the JavaScript files and make them into one JavaScript file. And then same thing with the HTML. So it makes it a lot more difficult to debug and track errors. So if you are trying to create a module or modify a module or a theme, definitely be sure that you've got the CSS as original, JavaScript as original, HTML as original, and also, also keep the inline JavaScript in the HTML as original. And then the same thing goes for the last item here. You want to be sure that you keep W3C validation. I would strongly recommend that you don't bother with this additional performance gain at the loss of your validation, your W3C validation. And then when you're done with the development environment and you're ready to move on to the production environment, then you just need to change all of the settings to the fastest settings, which are these settings right here. So we want to combine compress and cache and minify and compress inline JavaScript. And then we want to be sure that when you're ready to go live with your store, and move on to the production environment that you are not compiling and you have your cache active. So I'll save that. And it looks like we've still got our settings here, so I don't need to resave that. That's good. Now we'll move on to the media server section.